Hi there, I'm Laura McHarry, The Hidden Edge, with another tea break tip on how to use business models and tools to help you manage your growing business. Today we're looking at Carol's Corporate Social Responsibility Pyramid and Porter's evolution of that and a measure that you can use to assess your business in relation to social demands. So let's get started. According to Carol, corporate social responsibility involves the conduct of a business so that it is economically profitable, law-abiding, ethical and socially supportive. To be socially responsible then means that profitability and obedience to the law are foremost conditions when discussing the firm's ethics and the extent to which it supports society. It's economic responsibility. This concerns being profitable. It is the responsibility of a business producing goods and services needed by society to make a profit. Companies have shareholders who demand a reasonable return on their investments. They have employees who want a safe and fairly paid jobs, and they have customers who demand quality products at a fair price. The economic unit is the base of the pyramid where all other layers rest upon. Legal responsibilities. Obeying the law. The legal responsibility of businesses demands that they abide by the law and play by the rules of the game. Should companies choose to bend or even ignore their legal responsibilities, then the retribution price can be really quite high. Ethical responsibilities. Do no harm. The ethical responsibility consists of what is generally accepted by society over and above the economic and legal expectations. They are not necessarily imposed by law, but they are expected from ethical companies by the public and by governments. And then to philanthropic responsibilities or discretionary. This is being a good citizen. Discretionary responsibility is purely voluntary and guided by a company's desire to make social contributions not mandated by economics, law or ethics. Discretionary activities include generous philanthropic contributions that offer no payback to the company and are not expected. Confronted with specific social demands, how might you as a business respond? This continuum breaks down the responses into four key areas, high response, proactive, and obstructive being low response. Companies that adopt an obstructive response deny all responsibility, claim that the evidence of wrongdoing is misleading or distorted, and place obstacles in, in the way to delay any investigation, and fights all the way to not do something. A defensive response means that the company admits some errors of admission or commission. The company cuts its losses by defending itself, but is not obstructive. Defensive managers generally believe that these things happen, but they're not really anybody's fault. Accommodative. This means that the company accepts social responsibility for its actions, although it may do so in response to external pressure. Firms that adopt this action try to meet economic, legal and ethical responsibilities. If outside forces apply pressure, managers agree to curtail ethically question questionable activities. Proactive response means that firms take the lead in social issues. They seek to learn what is in the public interest and respond without coaxing or pressure from its stakeholders. So where do you fit in that line of continuum? And at different points of time, would you have a different reaction to certain areas? This gives you a framework for considering how you might react to certain aspects within your business when you're looking at the 
corporate social responsibilities of Carroll's Pyramid. In 2011, Michael E. Porter and Mark Kramer came up with the concept of creating shared value. This was an evolution on the pyramid that we looked at earlier, Carroll's Pyramid, in that there has been an ever-growing awareness about social challenges for which governments and not-for-profit and charitable organisations, where they lack sufficient funds and capabilities to meet social needs. Corporate social responsibility is more than just philanthropy. It includes philanthropy, also compliance, an understanding of community standards, citizenships, business citizen, and sustainability. And that means a lot of different things to different people, and it's hard to define sometimes. The next step, however, is creating shared value. The more we learn about poverty, healthcare, water, nutrition, about societal issues, the more we see opportunities to use economics or new business models to address these societal issues. Shared value is about creating new markets, new opportunities for growth, and new ways to improve productivity. With creative shared value, opportunities for disrupt disruptive innovation will proliferate. Capturing these opportunities will require new thinking about market segmentation, customer segmentation, supply chain management, human resource management and other management disciplines. So today we've looked at Carol's corporate social responsibility pyramid. We've looked at how Porter and Kramer have evolved that uh, into creating shared value, which has um, a link into the Blue Ocean strategies that we looked at in a video two or three weeks ago. You've also got the opportunity to use the continuum to assess how you react to corporate um, social demands, or rather social demands, in your business. Have a go, download the templates from the Hidden Edge website, and while you're there, do tell me stories about where you have been involved in co corporate social responsibility, or ethics for that matter, and where, they, where it's worked for you, and where perhaps it hasn't. It's tea break time, enjoy the rest of this one.